What is a prime mover? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to explore the four roles that muscles play when we're exercising. That includes the prime mover, the synergist, the antagonist and the fixator and then alongside that we're also going to apply that knowledge to your programming so you know exactly why you need to know this as a fit pro. Now before we get started I just want to let you know there are some mock questions alongside this video to test your knowledge on the information we talk about today. If you're on our blog you literally scroll to the bottom of the blog and you will find the mock questions there if you're on our youtube or watching this video anywhere else just click the link that is with this video and you'll be taken straight to those questions so let's get started on the information of these four different roles essentially whenever we do any exercise there are muscles that play different roles in our body or in that movement that we want to create and those muscles will change their roles depending on the exercise we're doing and depending on the joint action and the demand on the body. So for example, let's say we've got a press up. When we do a press up, our prime mover is going to be our pectoralis major. That's the muscle that is making up the most amount of action in and generating the most amount of force. However, I could go and do a bent over row and my main muscle or my prime mover is going to be my trapezius, my rhomboids on the back. And the opposing muscle becomes my pecs. So it's not that I have one role that one muscle plays in every single exercise. If I have an exercise, that exercise has a very specific role for each muscle. When I change the exercise, those muscles change roles. So it's important to know that it's different for every exercise. Now, when you're working this out, the first thing to know in any exercise is to first of all be familiar with your concentric and eccentric phrase of movement. And if you're not sure of these, then definitely check the link that is with this video because it'll help you explain this in greater detail. But essentially, the concentric movement is the one whereby the phase whereby you're lifting the load against gravity up towards the sky or towards the clouds. That concentric phase is when the prime mover is getting shorter. That's the phase we're really interested in when we're trying to analyze these four roles of the muscles. So the four roles, first of all, you've got prime mover. So a prime mover is the primary muscle that generates the primary amount of force. <laughs> so it's the muscle that generates the biggest amount of force and the starting force. So we said about a on a press up, it's going to be the pecs. It's the one that takes the most amount of oomph and, and power for the exercise to take place. But what you'll also notice is that in the concentric phase, that muscle is getting shorter because the origin and the insertion are getting closer to each other. And that's really important so that you can start looking at exercises and working out what the, the prime mover might be based purely on how the exercise is moving in the concentric phase. So that's the prime mover. It's the primary generating, the primary muscle for generating force. Then you have the antagonist. Now this is the exact opposite. So it's the exact opposite muscle and it is lengthening during the concentric phase and totally relaxed. And the reason for this is that based on a, a principle called reciprocal inhibition, it allows for the muscle to totally be relaxed in, in terms of the antagonist muscle so that the prime mover, also known as the agonist, can contract fully without any resisting force. And that's the relationship between that prime mover and the antagonist. Then you have something called a synergist. Now a synergist, like the name suggests, it moves in synergy with the prime mover. So it helps the movement take place. So if I go back to the press up scenario, is I've got my pecs as my prime mover, I've got the back muscles, so my trapezius and my rhomboids as my antagonist, my synergist is going to be the muscles that help the main actions take place. They help the generation of the force. So that's going to be my anterior deltoid and my triceps that help achieve that motion and help that take place. Now, the next of the roles is the fixator. Now, the fixator, like the name suggests, fixes the, the body in place so the movement can happen around it. Probably the most important thing here to think about is if you know where the origin of the prime mover is, then essentially the fixator is keeping that origin still. 
And that's so the, to allow the movement from there. Now, if you think about a fixator in a press up, because that's the example we've been using, you'd have your, your origin of your pectoralis major is going to be around your sternum and your clavicle. So everything that is keeping this stable, so your core, um, all around your back, all around those muscles that are literally keeping you stable, that's gonna be what is the fixator muscle in that exercise. Now, if we take those same form rolls and we move it to something else, like say a bicep curl, you'll notice that the muscles totally change, but we still have those four rolls that exist. Prime mover would be the biceps brachialis. The antagonist, remember it's lengthening and relaxing, is going to be the triceps brachii at the back of the arm. Then we've got the synergist. So these are going to be muscles that help the movement take place. So like the brachioradialis that happens in the forearm. Or that you've also then got the fixator, which is happening around the shoulder and keeping the shoulder in place. And depending on your position, could also be the core and some of the leg muscles as you're standing, holding position whilst you're using your arm. And it keeps it in place. And that's basically the four roles and their role in the body when we're doing exercises. Now, as a fit pro, you need to know this so that you can do programming with your clients and really understand what muscles are being worked where. Now, this is not only really beneficial for programming and writing in what exercises you want to choose, but also when you're doing training systems, because when you're doing training systems, you want to just work, say, with a specific prime mover or you want to target the prime mover twice, but not the syllogist. And you need to know these differences. But also it might affect how you're doing your order of exercise in session so that you've got your primary exercises that really focus on those prime movers and then your accessory exercises afterwards that might focus more on the synergist without pre-fatiguing any of the main muscles. Then you also have the need to use it for things like periodization over a long period of time to allow for rest and recovery of the main muscles that you've worked. So when you're layering on all of your knowledge throughout your level two and level three and even level four as a fit pro, you're actually stacking up all of your knowledge to allow you to understand this and get the best result with your client. And that's where understanding these four roles of the muscles in exercise actually allow you to program more effectively. So that's basically the four roles. Now you can test your knowledge using the three mock questions that are alongside this video. And also if you're looking for more help with your anatomy and physiology knowledge, then do check out the information that we have relating to our Revision Mastery Bootcamp. That's designed to help you pass your exam with confidence and help you progress as a fit pro and your knowledge as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.